now we're at Bellevue Park. We're in Over the Rhine right now. This is Old St. Mary's Church. We're here um, by the river, basically. And I decided to go to the campus of the University of Cincinnati. and welcome back to my YouTube channel. As you can see, I'm in a different setting right now and I'm here with my friend Katie. Um, I hope you can see it. There's the Cincinnati skyline right behind us. And this is the start of my 100,000 subscribers special video because I cracked 100,000 subscribers four days ago and it's pretty crazy. And I promised you guys that I would do something different for this one. So um, yeah, we actually have a fun day ahead of us because we're gonna go through Cincinnati, go to our favorite spots, typical Cincinnati spots, um, some German spots in Cincinnati. And then at each of those spots, I will answer some of the questions that you guys have asked me on Instagram, in the YouTube community tab, on Patreon, everywhere really, in the comments. I've collected them all and I'm just gonna try and answer as many as possible. So um, right now we're at Bellevue Park. With a really nice view of like downtown Cincinnati. <laughs> and this is close to the University of Cincinnati and close to where I've spent most of my time in, in Cincinnati. So the first question is, what is the strangest American habit for you as a German? And one of the things is definitely that Americans like to cut their food first with the knife in the right hand. And then when they're done cutting it, like their steak or whatever it is, then they take the fork into the right hand and eat it. In Europe, we always keep the fork in the right hand. Um, another thing is that I feel like Americans always claim that they're so busy and they're so like in a hurry all the time. They don't have time to eat. Like eating just really requires half an hour in and out of the restaurant or for lunch, just like get fast food really quickly. You don't need more than half an hour of, of a lunch break. But then when I'm like at the grocery store or like walking somewhere, people walk so slowly and it really makes me aggressive compared to Europe it's so slowly and also like the checkout process at grocery stores it's just so slow and it doesn't seem to make sense because why if you if you're in a hurry and you have zero time why would you then waste all your time at the grocery store if it really only needs to take 20 minutes but in the US it often takes like an hour but we also like when we grocery shop we grocery shop for like three weeks Yes, in but Europe, it's not it's not that. Things. Yes, but it's just people move slowly. Yeah. <laughs> like you Interesting. Just I never things. noticed that. And like the checkout is so slow too. Like yeah. at Kroger or Walmart compared to like regular European stores, at least in my opinion, yeah. I'd say it's really I wonder slow. if that's like a Cincinnati thing too, like because we're kind of a Midwest closer thing to the maybe. Midwest, yeah. Yeah. Everything's a little slower. Yeah. And then one more thing that I've mentioned before in some of my other videos is that I don't understand why Americans use disposable dishes for normal occasions when they're just at home by themselves or with their family and it's not a big group it's not a party setting it's not a grill out it's just a normal regular setting and instead of just using their regular dishes their regular plates they use disposable dishes even though they have a dishwasher so i the whole like we're lazy argument i don't really understand so that's weird to me too okay. katie's picking another question <laughs> the pressure's on <laughs> testing <laughs> should i ask one in german oh okay. i like just butcher the accent <laughs> Okay. Um, you can try it, yes. And then please translate it too. Okay, okay. <laughs> of course. She does not speak any German. I, I know I know Scheisse. <laughs> Scheisse. Uh, and, and Arschlef. <laughs> Did I say that wrong? No. Okay. Close enough. I was wondering how tall you are. Okay, I am 163 centimeters tall, so a meter and 63. And in foot, it's five foot four. So I'm short. For German, I'm short. For an American, I'm tall. Because I think the person also asked if there's a difference between um, heights in Germany and the US, and there definitely is. Like Germans overall are, are taller. The average height is taller. I think I'm actually taller than the American average woman, but shorter than the German uh, average woman, average German woman. <laughs> the American average is 5'3", I think. Yeah, really and I'm 5'4". Yeah. What is your zodiac sign? Pisces, Fischer in German. <laughs> um, okay, let's do one more. Let's do do one you more. enjoy a nice grilled cheese sandwich? I do. Such a random yes, question. Yes, I do. I love cheese and I love bread. So everything carbs with cheese is heaven for me. So yes, I definitely do. Okay, so we're gonna go to the next spot. Okay, so we're in Over the Rhine right now, which used to be a German um, neighborhood in Cincinnati. 
Um, Hence the name Over the Rhine. Over the Rhine, on the other side of the German Rhine River, because um, this was like a German enclave. So in the 19th century, this entire neighborhood was in German. Like it was German immigrants. Teacher, uh, schools, schools were, were in German. German. Every everyone spoke in German. Businesses were in German. Um, church was in German. Street names were in German. Everything up until like World War One, and then there was like an anti-German hysteria. It's been gentrified, which is like good and bad. There's a lot of cons to this, but. Um, and still like a lot of uh, conflict or like clashing yeah but honestly I, I do enjoy it <laughs> like Same. I do it I do enjoy the historical parts of it here. but I also do enjoy the gentrified parts because there's like nice bars and restaurants and people are just enjoying themselves <laughs> here in a second because this is a Cincinnati original ice cream place. Oh, that AC feels so good. <laughs> Did you feel that? Yes. <laughs> like a little wave of cold air. Yeah, it's pretty hot and humid in Cincinnati as always usually. It's actually not as hot it's as a lot milder than usual. Yeah, but it's still hot and humid and you sweat a lot. Oh, this thing over there used to be a German beer garden. Heinrich Wielert, I think, and it still says HW, 1873. Would you like walk down the street alone? No, filming this? I brought you. Yeah. <laughs> I'd feel so dumb. Do that and I'm like, you're so brave. Yeah. Corona, they started closing off a bunch of the side streets here so that people can dine in the streets. I'm not sure, do they do this during the week too? Yeah, it's, it's Sunday uh, today. Pretty permanent, I think. Okay. Um, yeah, it's okay. so good. I get feeling like yeah. eating on the streets. Yeah. Because, like, usually it's not as easy to do that in the US because of the alcohol law. So, usually, people, like, restaurants can only have spots like this. Where like you have a fence on the side um, to make it clear that this is the sidewalk, this is public, and then this is this belongs to the restaurant. But the typical like curbside or sidewalk dining experience, like you have it in France and Germany and everywhere in Europe, you don't usually have as much in the U.S. But now you do, which is cool. Just wanted to show that there's German beer on the menu, which is pretty usual. Like you'll find, especially Weinstefana and um, Schafferhofer. Radler, you'll find a lot in American restaurants, but they also have um, Kronbacher actually, which you don't see a lot. Okay, so I did get the German Schäferhofer Radler, which tastes exactly like it does in Germany. It's not the best, like I usually wouldn't get that in Germany, but that's okay. And she got a coffee. Actually, it's a nice cappuccino. Okay, Katie's at the bathroom right now, so I'll just try and answer a few questions. And there's a car with a bunch of bass. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Um, okay, so the next question is, was it difficult for you to decide to move to Cincinnati? And I have to say that it never felt like I made this decision. Like it was always a step-by-step -step progress. And to this day, I don't really feel like I decided, okay, I'm moving to Cincinnati now permanently. It's just like, I always decided to stay a little bit longer, stay a little bit longer, come back. And obviously I was lucky enough to um, get a green card. So now I have that freedom that I can actually stay here for as long as I want but I haven't decided that permanently in my view. So I'd say it, it wasn't difficult for me. Were you at a Gymnasium, Realschule or Gesamtschule? So these are different types of schools in Germany and I went to a Gymnasium. Okay, and last one before we go to the next spot, favorite German TV show or movie? Okay, favorite German TV shows, or like, I guess, not TV, but Netflix, um, is definitely dark. I think I've mentioned that a few times recently on my Instagram um, live streams and in stories and stuff like that. Dark is amazing. I just finished season three. It's really good. Um, I also really enjoyed Doctor's Diary. Um, which has an English title but is a German TV show. It was like a comedy show. Um, Turkish Veranfänger, which was also by the same writers, I think, also a comedy show. Um, movies, Victoria, which you guys maybe know, I think it was 2015. Really impressive movie. Um, Beste Zeit, which is actually a Bavarian movie. Heimatfilm is the genre that it is, um, by Markus H. Rosenmüller. Love that movie. 
Traumfrauen is just a rom-com, like German rom-com, but it's one of my favorites. And I'm um, actually by the same people who made Dark, the Netflix show. I also really like the movie. <laughs> okay, now there's a dog fight breaking out. So by the same uh, people who made Dark, um, the movie Who Am I? And there's Katie. I, I just said hi to these dogs and they like, immediately they're like, get her! Yeah. <laughs> so we're at Graders right now, which is a Cincinnati original ice cream brand and parlor. And I was gonna show the... They don't even have them here. I was gonna show the different flavors, but they don't have them. Let's go outside because it's too loud in here. Okay, let's answer one question very quick. This is not an easy question, um, but what do Americans think of Bavaria? Oh, Katie, what do they think? Um, we <laughs> only know the Oktoberfest, to be honest, and I think Bavarian pretzels, but that's a Cincinnati thing. I don't think anybody else in like the country no, knows what do, that is. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, good question. I think a lot of Americans just um, think that Germany equals Bavaria, so a lot of the German stereotypes are actually Bavarian stereotypes, but other than that, I don't think Americans have a lot of opinions on that. <laughs> a lot of people actually ask me about um, what my plans are for staying in the US or moving back. Like a lot of people ask, are you planning on moving back to Munich at some point? Where do you see yourself in 10 years? Are you gonna be in the US in five years? And I feel like I've answered this before, but I have zero plan. So I'm here for now. I might be in Germany in 10 years, I might be in Germany in five years, but I don't know. I might be in Cincinnati or I might be somewhere else in the US or somewhere else in the world. Um, I really have no plan. The great thing is that I have the freedom to do that because of, I have a green card so I can stay here. But um, I'm just honestly going with the flow. <laughs> yeah, I am lucky. Going with the flow. So um, yeah, I'm really just doing what life throws at me. If anything happened back in Germany, I would definitely move back home. Like if someone got sick or something, I would move back home. Um, long term, I kind of see myself at least live in Germany partly because if I ever have a family, which I do, I do want to have a family at some point, I would want my kids to like grow up in Germany as well. This is Old St. Mary's Church, the Alte St. Marienskirche, and it's from 1841, built by German immigrants. Um, and they actually have a German mass here every Sunday at 11, I think. And there's a pretty big German community who comes here. And they also all celebrate afterwards and get drunk every Sunday <laughs> after the mass. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is one of the typical German heritage spots in Cincinnati. And we'll answer a few more questions. So if you could change something culturally about the US and Germany, what would it be? So I would definitely make Americans a little bit more direct and make Germans a little bit more friendly so like I would have like a mix like Americans are in a lot of cases way too polite in my opinion in some occasions and they're not always very reliable because they're not always very yeah not always very honest with on what time. they say <laughs> also not always on time um, so I would like make it a mix of the two. I would have Germans be a little bit more friendly and open and polite and Americans a little bit more direct and reliable. Yeah. Same. <laughs> How many countries have you visited? Over 20. I think I sat down and counted them once, but like, it was definitely oh, yeah. like, no. <laughs> Another time. Is there a book you recommend for somebody trying to learn German? Obviously, I've never learned German myself as a second language. I'm sure there's like a bunch of books for people who learn it as a second language, but I would just recommend kids' books, like children's books. And some of the best children's books, in my opinion, in German are from Erich Kästner and Ottfried Preußler. Like, for example, Das Fliegende Klassenzimmer or Die Kleine Hexe. There's many more. Just Google it. That's how I learned French was like reading um, baby books. Yeah, it was well, really helpful. Even baby books. They're like just children's. Yeah, novels. but even like even like the ten-year-old books were. Mm -hmm really difficult yeah. to understand because it's like a different uh, tense, yeah. like the past tense, yeah. you know? Do you have an irrational phobia that your friends and family tease you about? <laughs> okay, I thought about including this into the vlog because it's such a weird question. I don't really have any because I'm a pretty easygoing person. Um, I'm not really disgusted by anything. I don't really have any weird tics, but the one thing that I do have, I'm kind of like grossed out by anything that's 
dead. Like, I don't eat meat because I think it's weird to eat dead creatures, dead animals. And I'm also like really grossed out by anything. Like, I don't even kill mosquitoes. If anything, I do it with like a shoe, but never with my bare hands. Um, so I think that's like a thing. I don't like to have anything dead around me. What software do you use for your YouTube videos? Adobe Premiere Pro. <laughs> this is not a sponsorship. <laughs> What was your major? I um, got a bachelor's degree in Germany in communications and my minor was political science and then I got a master's of arts in German studies in the US. Do you like the weather better in Germany or in Ohio or are they pretty much the same? Good question. I think I like them both. They're not the same. I'd say the winters are pretty similar, especially like with how cold it gets and how much snow we get. At least Munich and Cincinnati are very comparable with that. Um, the summers in Cincinnati are way longer and way more um, consistent than they are in Munich. Um, but it's also like much hotter and much more humid, so that can be a little much. Like today, we're both sweating our asses off. <laughs> it's a lot sometimes. But I actually I do prefer that over not having any summer or like not being able to plan ahead because you never know. Is, is it going to be summer this year? Do we are we going to have one week of summer or two weeks of summer? Overall, I'd say um, Ohio has pretty short fall and spring seasons. Like the summer is really long and the winter is long. In Germany, the spring and the fall seasons are a little bit, little bit longer. Yeah, and overall it's a little bit colder, but it does get hot in Germany in the summer. People are actually currently complaining about the heat in Germany. Do you have any cooking eating habits that could be considered controversial? Um, I think the example that the person put was dipping pizza in ranch dressing. What's my hair doing? Bye hair. Um, and actually, that's I think that's such a Midwest thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I. Love I, ranch. I I started doing that, um, but only with American pizza. Ugh, I'm eating my hair. Um, I do that with American pizza. I would never do that with like Italian style pizza. Um, so yes, that I do. I also dip my pretzels, um, my soft pretzels that you get in the US into beer cheese, which is an American invention. Um, so that is definitely controversial for Bavarians. Um, and one more thing is I eat Nutella with butter. But they're, like in Germany, there's two teams. There's Nutella with butter and Nutella without butter. I'm Nutella with butter, so feel free to complain about that if you want. Can I ask one in German? Try it. First, do Sean Mal in Österreich. Oh, that was pretty good. <laughs> yeah. So the question was, have I been to Austria before? And yes, I'm from Munich, which is really close to Austria. It's like an hour by car. So yes, I've been to Austria many, many, many times. I don't even know how many times, yeah to ski, for vacation, um, yeah. Yeah, it's hard to see. Okay, I'm currently filming on my phone because my GoPro um, battery is getting low, but um, this is also one of the leftovers in Over the Rhine in Cincinnati, one of the German leftovers. Um, it says Deutsche Gegenseitige Versicherungsgesellschaft von Cincinnati um, on that building. So the um, mutual insurance company of Cincinnati. So we're here um, by the river, basically. So you can see the riverfront right here with the bridge. And um, there's this famous <laughs> sign behind us that says, sing the Queen City. Queen City is a nickname for Cincinnati. One other question that people asked me was, um, Katie, can you repeat it? <laughs> where, if you could live somewhere else besides Germany or the US, where would you live? And then there was and another- and did it say why? I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> <laughs> and there was another person who asked which English speaking country um, would you want to live in? And so I kind of like combined the two questions because I don't even think that I would want to live in a country that's not English speaking just because I'm not really fluent in any other language and I do like the cultures in the English speaking country. So I think it would be either Canada or Australia. Ireland. I don't think I would no? want to move to Ireland. No, just because of the weather. <laughs> True. And a lot of people also ask me about um, my long-term goals in life and with my channel. And I have to say that I don't have any. And this sounds kind of weird, but I'm not really the kind of person who has goals. Um, I think the only really life goals that I have is I want to have a family at some point in my life. And one thing that has kind of come to my mind recently is um, I kind of want to produce audio plays for kids at one point and I think I want to adapt famous 
um, German audio plays because they're super popular with uh, German children. Uh, like every German person who's watching this right now probably listened to audio plays growing up, like Die Drei Fragezeichen, uh, Bibi Blocksberg, Bibi und Tina, etc. Um, so I think one of my life goals is producing those in English and possibly adapting some of the ones that were super popular in Germany. But that's like, I don't know if that's even possible. Um, honestly, besides that, I am not the kind of person that plans ahead. I'm not the kind of person who has huge goals. I just always go with the flow. I, I do what feels right. I'm a very, I'm a gut person. Is that something you can say? I'm, I'm an intuitive you person. Gut. Yeah, I follow yeah, my gut. I guess with my channel, I kind of set myself a short term goal, but it's not really a goal for success. It's just that um, in March, I kind of started doing this full time pretty much. And I um, don't see this as a long-term career or anything. So I told myself that I'm gonna do it for a year, full-time, commit it, and then see from there. Like if I enjoyed it, where it brought me, if I wanna keep doing it, or if I just wanna go back and do this as a hobby on the side. Um, so I guess that's like a short-term goal that I set for myself. So we're down by the Ohio River right now. So across the river is actually Kentucky. That's not Cincinnati anymore and not Ohio anymore. This is the Roebling Bridge, which was built by a German immigrant in the 19th century. And um, this guy also, after he built this bridge, he went ahead and constructed the Brooklyn Bridge in New York City, um, but then died before he could finish the construction. for like a week where would you choose and why okay so I thought about this before when I picked the question and I would not want to go to the Wild West and I feel like a lot of people are gonna say Wild West it's so it was so lawless like I wouldn't want to be a part of it I think I would want to go into like the 19th century like the 1800s and actually possibly check out those like German immigrants enclaves and just like see how it was for the German immigrants to live here and then I think I would pick the 1920s with like prohibition and everything going on in New York City yeah, or even just in Cincinnati. I think anywhere it was kind of a cool It was time. big here actually, because yeah. we had all the um, bootleggers. Yeah, yeah, there's so many, yeah. Another question was, when traveling to Germany, what German goods that are hard to find in the States do you pack into your suitcase on your return trip? Okay. So usually products from DM, which is a German drugstore. And I know that a lot of other German expats do that too. And I actually recently ordered a huge order from DM um, to the US because I ran out of products. And they have so many products that are of really really high quality you can't find anything like it in the US and it's really cheap like some skin lotions I've tried the really expensive ones in the US the cheap ones in the US and even the cheap ones are like five times as expensive and they're not even half as good so DM products and then also Mate drinks Club Mate is one of the brands I've mentioned it before in one of my videos um, the Mate beverages that they have in the US are just not the same unfortunately and I really miss that. What other parts of America have you been to? After the pandemic is there anywhere you haven't traveled to yet that's on your bucket list? So I've been to a lot of places in the US. I think I've been to over 20 states I want to say. I've counted it before but I forget. Yeah, that's um, what I've been to I think. But yeah I mean a lot of them I've only been to for like one driving night. Through, okay. One, okay the driving throughs I didn't count. I counted the ones where I've spent at least one night. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the places that I haven't been to yet that I definitely want to go to to are Oregon, especially Portland, Louisiana, and especially New Orleans, and Texas. And then also Miami, Florida, actually. So four things I think are on my bucket list to visit next. Okay, what's your favorite food? What kind of sweets do you go crazy for? Um, I think my favorite food, I don't eat meat, so anything without meat, but um, I love everything like carbs. I love pasta, rice, 
bread. Um, I love mac and cheese and those kind of things. I love everything with cheese too, risotto, um, and the kinds of um, candy that I go crazy for is mainly chocolate and Nutella. Sind deine Zuschauer eher deutsch oder amerikanisch? Are my viewers more German or American? Um, they used to be way more American, like I think 80-90% American, but then in March one of my videos kind of went viral, the reaction video to the top 10 reasons not to live in Germany thing, um, and that kind of went viral with the German audience, so then my audience was way more German for a while, and now it's kind of evened out, and it's like 50% German, 50% American, which is honestly like the ideal situation, so that's really cool. So we're in front of Mecklenburg Gardens right now. Um, unfortunately, they're closed today, which we weren't aware of. But Mecklenburg's is one of the places that totally remind me of Germany. And one of the questions was, which place in Cincinnati reminds me most of home? And honestly, um, not a lot of places in the US and in Cincinnati remind me of Germany or Munich in particular. Um, really the only places I'd say are like the traditional typical German places and they remind me of the traditional typical German places in Munich because like not all Germany is like that. We're a modern country um, But the beer gardens that we have here in Cincinnati do remind me of the beer gardens in Germany and Mecklenburg's is actually the oldest German restaurant in Cincinnati so this is like a meeting spot for a lot of people from the German-American community in Cincinnati. Um, there is like a Stammtisch here once a week usually. There is people who meet up here for to watch like Bundesliga. There is lots of events happening here and at other German spots in Cincinnati. Um, this is a really nice spot because they have a really nice beer garden and they have amazing German beer too. Okay, so a little detour without Katie. Um, it's actually later in the day now and I decided to go to the campus of the University of Cincinnati and it's beautiful lighting right now and this is the way that I always walked to campus and I haven't been here in a few months so that's kind of crazy. Okay, so this right behind me, that building is where I got my master's degree in so I spent a lot of time in there I had all my classes in there for my master's and I also taught German in there. Yeah, weird memories, it's crazy. Okay, so I sat down here. Um, you should be able to see the stadium behind me and a few other buildings and hopefully the nice sky. I love the Cincinnati sunsets, they're so nice. We don't really have nice sunsets like that in Munich, at least not as often. In Cincinnati, when it's not super cloudy, it's usually every single day. So one of the questions that I haven't answered yet is, gibt es in den USA auch so viele unterschiedliche und komplizierte Dialekte wie in Deutschland? So are there as many different and complicated dialects in the US as there are in Germany? And the answer for me is definitely no, because in Germany we have um, so many dialects. There's many different numbers. I think some official numbers say that there's like over 50 official dialects. Some numbers say that there's like over 100 or 200 dialects. Um, in the US there definitely is variation, but you can travel very, very far and people will still pretty much sound the same. There's accents for sure, but heavy dialects where the whole like the vocab is different and the pronunciation is different entirely um, Really not so much. Um, they, they do exist But it's not nearly as common. I've never talked to anyone who I didn't understand at all If anything, they will have an, a heavy accent, but not really speak dialect like when people speak Bavarian dialect very heavily people from the north of Germany usually don't understand a single word so it's not really like that in the US, I would say. So that was the end of my 100,000 subscribers special vlog. <gasps> of course, we did not get to see the whole city. It's impossible to see the whole city within one day or like in one vlog. But we did check out a few important and interesting spots. I think um, we definitely had a great time. I tried to answer as many questions as possible. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Make sure to uh, give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Um, obviously subscribe if you're not a subscriber yet, if you're not one of the 100,000 people yet, then you need to become one. Um, join the club. <laughs> join the club, join the family. 
um, and of course check out all of my social media channels for more behind the scenes content and um, you can also support me on Patreon if you want to become a patron there's always monthly Q&A sessions with me so like all the questions that I didn't answer this time you can ask me once a month in a live session on Patreon and um, you can also support me on buymeacoffee.com slash if you just want to support me without any long-term commitments, just buy me a coffee or a beer or something like that. Um, I definitely appreciate it. Every kind of support, whether it's a subscription or comment or like or direct message or just watching my videos and telling your friends about them. Um, yeah, so I hope everyone's having a great rest of your day and I hope I'll see you next time. Tschüss and bye guys. <laughs> bye from Katie. <laughs>